Hey guys, I've been waiting for this franchise to come back for quite some time. We're going to be recapping The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 15. Y'all, they've been here for a minute. Season 15, Episode 1. Who's going to check my new boo? Okay, we are recapping this episode and y'all, I feel like... I was a bit overhyped, like the bar was high for me for these ladies. So it's like I'm anticipating, okay, what's gonna happen? What's gonna go down? And I felt like this episode, it was, eh, it was okay. I think, honestly, I feel like it's a lot, a lot of it old tea because we already know that Sheree has been with this guy Martel and everything has been out on the blogs about them so I felt like there was so much focus on Sheree and her new boo that this episode didn't do as much as I needed it to do for me okay but I was super happy to see all our girls you know and oh my gosh let's get into the tea let's get into the tea so we opened the episode with glamour in the first two seconds. Yeah, we were getting black glamour. We were getting Harlem Nights glamour, okay? Then we got Candy ready to check a chick, ready to drag a newbie. And I'm like, wow, already? This is like the first couple of seconds. And then we see Sheree's new man slash old man. We know this man already, Martel, and all the drama that it's causing. So just like that, our ladies are back and they're ready to give it to us this season. So I hope it's not a whole season surrounding Sheree and her relationship. Like, ugh, let not that be the storyline for the whole season, okay? Anywho, we are over at Sheree, and her new man, Martel, comes over for a visit, okay? Sheree, she looks good, okay? She looks so good, y'all. Even better than when we first originally saw her when she stepped into the Housewives franchise scene, okay? She looks so good. So, 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 so good. What she had on was She by Sheree. Is it for sale? We don't know. I don't know. I didn't even bother to check, but she looks good. And so she's talking about how she met Martel and she met him through a mutual friend. He lives in Huntsville, Alabama. So it's another long distance relationship situation, y'all. But at least he is not in jail. <laughs> so he can visit. He can visit and he can put in the effort. Since meeting him, she you know she is so happy she is so appreciative she is she's feeling like a woman so he has put in a lot of effort because you know he has to commute all the way from alabama to come all the way to georgia to see sheree and sheree is just happy that she did hasn't given up on love and good for her she shouldn't give up on love so last year we had to see her look crazy y'all look crazy waiting for a man to not show up on national television and that's just you know heartbreaking so it's great that you know she's extremely happy with this man and she's doing everything she can this whole episode to protect her relationship she doesn't want these girls to come after with what she has okay she's trying to keep it together keep it together so they're cooking together and this was a surprise set up by Sheree to have a personal chef come in to help but Martel he wasn't really too interested with this surprise he was kind of hoping for something more x-rated you know and I'm like chill 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 take what you can get because nah so they talk about about the 40th birthday party that Sandra Ross will be hosting for her husband. And they're invited and all the other girls are going to be there. So the person that Sheree is least excited about being at that party is Candy. Y'all, Candy, she has been going in on Sheree on social media with all these spoofs, all these gags that has been made on Sheree. Oh! You know, Sheree, 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 she doesn't like, she's not too excited by Candy. And she thinks, and particularly because, you know, Candy thinks that um, Sheree's new man, Martel, is an opportunist. And, you know, Martel, he shades saying that, no, he's not the opportunist. It's really Sheree's ex-husband who's the opportunist. And that's the real gag. That's the real tea. So... We're going to watch how this relationship develops in this season. But 
you know, I think I people forget that remember when Todd first came to the scene seeking for the love of Candy Bruce Hart, he was once called an opportunist. I feel like any newbie that comes into the scene gets hazed by these ladies. So I feel like this is part of the right of entry for these guys. So I feel like they should be prepared and be ready. And if anything, not be an op- don't be an opportunist and you don't have to be worry about being an opportunist. So now we are over at Candy Coated Productions. And we are with Candy Coated Click. Y'all, we get to see Don Juan and Carmen sitting together with Candy and they're having their little key key, their little gossip. So they're talking about Sheree's business and how, you know, Candy wanted to help Sheree, but you know, Sheree don't want to pay nobody. Therefore, she's not going to have something to look back on that's good. So anywho, the conversation switches back over to business. You know, Candy's about her business. And Candy Coded Nights is coming up and Candy, she's feeling a little bit overwhelmed. She has a lot going on for her business wise, but also she's managing her own family too, you know, and she is dealing with her son saying that his mom works too much at his young age. And, you know, the phone call that he did while she was at the confessional pulled me at my heart so i can imagine how she felt in that situation so this is not a situation that's new for candy we did learn about this kind of issues that they were going through in the previous season so i guess they don't haven't yet resolved you know or have things you know formulated in a way that you know the kids don't feel like their mom is missing out or the kids are missing out on mom. So now over to Miss Kenya Summer Moore. And she is visiting Candy Cody Click. So not only we get Miss Kenya Summer Moore, we also get Moneta. And she brings her big old booty over to the Candy Coated Click, okay? So Moneta, she had a party and Candy didn't come, y'all. And that's because Candy felt some type of way. She was a little bit mad that Moneta supported Marlo last season. About the situation of her kids being kicked out of Marlo's home. So, you know, Moneta said in her confessionals that, you know, Candy should know that I look at both sides and that... It's it's not, I take this person's side, not the other person's side. So she shouldn't feel some type of way. So Kenya, she was at Moneta's party and she had a companion who we learn that Moneta set her up with, you know. And the guy's name is Roy and he's interesting. She looks nothing but happy to be with Roy. She is crazy about him, actually. She feels that... You know, she's a woman again. She feels love again. Like, I love this for Kenya because, you know, Kenya, she has been going through it with Mr. Matt. What's his name, Mr. Matt? Mr. 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 Sir, whatever his name is. Mark. His name is Mark. Mr. Mark. Okay. So Kenya brings up how disappointed she is about Sheree and Candy's friendship because she feels like, you know, they should make things up. And Candy, she was pretty petty and made fun of Sheree online. But I feel like that's what Candy does. Like, I feel like she is so creative that if you mess with her, she's going to put it out in her creative. A lot of her shows came from, like, what she's been feeling like with her mother, with her relationships with friends. Candy, she's such a creative. So I am not surprised that she made fun of Sheree and the whole world got to see the creative creativeness of candy brewers okay so the ladies are talking about what the streets have been saying about martel so what have the streets been saying about martel so kenya said that martel pretty much slid into her dms Oh, and not only this, you know what I like about Kenya, Kenya, she makes a statement, but she also comes with receipts. She pulls the receipts and says, here, and it's pretty much, um, she had to accept the message so she can see what he said, but he already deleted what he sent to her. So this is quite interesting. And you know, the girls want to know if, you, no, Kenya wants to know if she should even bring it up to to Sheree. Of course she will. She she's asking, but we all know what she's gonna do. So Kenya, she brings up hearing Candy and Todd fussing on in the background of the of a phone call, maybe butt dialed and she heard what was being said. 
And you know, it's the same issues. They're both super busy with work and they need each other for support, but they're not getting the, the support that they want. So Todd wanted Candy to help with writers for a play that he's doing, a movie that he's doing, but there was an issue with the scheduling and it just failed because of communication. So, you know, Candy, she gets super, super emotional as she always does. And it's just the first episode. We already have Candy crying. So I know this season's going to be quite tough. Girl, you have a long way to go. So Kenya, she gives sisterly advice to Candy. And I, I'm so happy that she does. Because she says to Candy that to make time for your husband. Because she doesn't want her to end up how she did with her man, Mark. So we're now over at the Rosses, okay? And it's still a full house, y'all. It's still a full house. Oh my god, I don't know how they do it. But anywho, they are planning Sandra's husband's 40th birthday. S not Sandra, Sanya. Sanya, Sanya's husband's 40th birthday. So last year, Sanya's party was a womp, 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 womp. I mean, I thought so too. I thought it was quite basic. That's not a good first impression, especially, you know, for a platform like this. But, you know, she doesn't want to be counted out. So she has, like, something in store for us. And this this is about to be really a birthday bash. So she is hyping it up. And I'm ready to see. Uh, so we pretty much get to see the family dynamic. And we learned that, you know, Sanya, she's a bit of a micromanager with her family because she is so used to everyone catering to her because you know she was the star she was the athlete so she had you know made opportunities for her family to profit from her as a business and you know i guess the issue is that the family kind of wants more boundaries because sonya she doesn't know when to turn it off she doesn't know when to just put it on family mode and not work mode so we hear that and that's gonna it seems to be what's gonna be the running theme for her in her relationship with her family and you know i i don't want nothing bad i don't want too much drama but come on sonya you don't gotta you don't have to you don't have to micromanage people while they're eating. Come on, give them a break. So we're over at Moore Manor and we get to see Miss Brooklyn trying on dresses and she is just too cute. So then we get to see Sonya looking for fits for the bash and the fits are fitting. But then we ultimately ultimately get to over to Candy Burr's home and it's family time y'all but todd he is busy and he's at he is working on this movie that he's trying to get together and their tension is just increasing so todd is working and candy she was singing in the background trying to hint at todd like you know okay it's time for family time and it was a bit awkward so i was like oh my god not on national television guys not this black family no we're not so, anywho, we're over at Marlo's home, and the boys are cleaning up for Monty. So, I'm so happy to see them, because when we last left off, God, it was, it, was, it was too much. I was just so happy to see the boys in good spirits. And, you know, their mom is still not in a good space, but Monty is stepping up and being Monty. So I'm happy that Marlo, she's still there for the boys and I'm hoping that it's a l little bit better. So Marlo's life coach, Miss Sharon, she comes over for a visit for not only for Marlo, but also for the boys. They pretty much talk about the kick out situation and the boys are super forgiving. And it's kind of hard to see the boys kind of make Marlo feel a little bit better and to offer her comfort. I feel like it should be the other way around. But I'm just, I just, I just really hope and pray for these boys that they are truly okay and they get better. So they, they actually, you know, at, Per the advice of the life coach, they came up with a mission statement that they are actually still working on. But the whole point is that they live by this and they remember this when they feel down. And their mission statement is that they are family that comes together when time is needed and a family that love each other and have each other's back. And I always hope that they really 
really live by that message and that's really good everyone should have a mission statement that makes me think i kind of do have a mission statement at the end i always say at the end is to share as much kindness as possible do you guys have a mission statement or something that you live by let me know down in the comments below so marlo this is marlo doing gentle parenting and i just hope they get this together and that it works because y'all these kids are young they're so impressionable and things are already difficult as is let's not make life much more complicated so now we are at charades and sonia she pays a bit visit for a workout sonia oh my gosh sonia looks good she don't need to work out no more so Sheree, she is wearing a Sheree, Sheree's production. And I don't know if it's available on the website, like I said before, but it looks good. The color is nice. I like the pants in the in the beginning of the episode as opposed to this pink pants, but it's, it looks good. So Sanya, she is sharing how her family's working, how her family has been working for her and how they're going through it and that she's, you know, she's like the micromanager. But then we get a new B pop in and her name is Courtney. Um, when I saw Courtney, I'm like, she doesn't have any workout clothes. So why she showed up? So we learned a little bit about Courtney and she has a consulting company and a jewelry brand that she's so proud of that she is wearing head to toe of her jewelry. She got invited to the Harlem Knights party and she knows she she kinda only knows Marlo. Um she does bring up candy, but she she kinda was being shady about candy. She was trying to say that candy was trying to get information about her and she felt some type of way about it. And then Sheree, of course, she jumps in on the back bandwagon to sh be shady towards K candy because you know they're not seeing for each other at this moment so we are over at sanya looking at the venue being being prepped for the party she told us the budget was forty thousand. i thought that was a lot already but y'all apparently it wasn't enough it went all the way up to a hundred thousand so yeah y'all this party better be good I don't want, oh my, can you imagine spending all this money and your party still not good? Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Okay. I would ask for a refund if these girls had to critique a party that I spent $100,000 on. But, you know, the people, they were dressed up. They showed up. We first get Kenya. She comes into the scene and she's shady. She is so shady. I feel like that's just her being her. She said that, you know, the bar was low for expectations when arriving to this party. But, you know, I it was funny. She said, it's cute. The space is giving cute. And I'm like, okay, Sanya, that's not bad. That's not bad. You're, you're off to a great start. So, guys, Ralph, he is at this party. And Kenya, she goes over to him to greet Ralph. And she asks, uh, where is your wife? And he says that she is sick and that she's going through a family emergency. So, y'all, I was so confused. I'm, like, confused. Then why are you here, sir? Why are you here? But Kenya says what we're all thinking. But she says it in the confessional. She's like, he is married to the crisis. And, and I'm like, okay, Kenya already with the fun shade. Like, I, Kenya, we missed you. We missed you, Shade Assassin, at it again. So, anywho, Candy, she comes in with Todd, and she thinks the event is also cute, but not a candy-coated production level cute. So, I'm like, dang, I wonder what she thinks of the budget it, once she finds out that the budget of this production was 100000 if that's what it should have gave. Because sometimes people overspend on something that doesn't look what it's supposed to look like in that budget range so mm, i'm curious to what candy's thoughts are but marlo she is here and she is avoiding the ladies and she's going straight to gambling and focusing on having a good time sheree arrives and you see her come with her date martel but anywho the most important per people honor of the nights 
have arrived. The Rosses have made their grand entrance. And all the girls are all together embracing Sanya and saying how, how lovely this event is. But then they all look at Martel and they look at him like, why are you here? Like, you don't belong here. What are you doing here? <laughs> so Kenya asks if this is official. And Sheree is not having it. Sheree is protect my peace mode. Mark, Marlo asks Courtney if you're gonna if she's gonna ask Candy if y'all are friends. Marlo is just here to be shady. So Courtney, of course, the newbie, she takes the bait and goes confront Candy. So these girls, okay, we get it. These girls do not know each other. Which is fair, but I feel like Courtney, the way she's going about it, a bit doing much. They know each other's circle, and that's fine. They they know of a friend of a friend of a friend, but they don't know each other. And the way they are talking to each other, it's not good. Candy, no, Candy, she's standing her ground, but Courtney, she's giving me Chihuahua vibes. I'm not. I don't know if I like Courtney. This is not a good start. This is not a good look. And you know, Marlo is not helping, and she will not help. So I was like, oof, that's not a good first impression of the newbie. I Let's give her a chance, though. So Kenya and Moneta, they pull Sheree to talk to her. They they want to give her a little talk. So Moneta says that she heard rumors of, of Montel, Martel dating people down here in Atlanta. And Sheree is pretty much where they at because he's only been by my side for the past three days he was here so she's not hearing that at all but she's glad that Moneta found her voice that's that's a little shady but okay Kenya it's her turn and she shares that Martel sent her a DM so Sheree is not having that either we about to see she Hulk coming come to live performance here y'all because she calls out Martel to come out and I'm like, okay, okay, that's an interesting spot to end the scene. And I felt like, you know, overall this episode, I feel like I would have given it close to an eight, but not past an eight. I feel like, you know, the to be continued part and the preview for the next episode is giving more. I feel like, okay, this was just a builder episode to kind of set the stage, set the tone. We didn't get to see Drew. We saw Drew's husband, but I know these ladies have a lot in store for us. And I'm just here for the ride. So we got to be patient. We got to be patient. So until then, we'll wait next week for new updates of what's going on. Oh my God. I know that once we see an episode, social media of these ladies, the powerhouses are going to go at it with each other. So it's going to be so much to cover. So guys, if you like this recap, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate every one of you. And as always, share as much kindness as possible. And leave down in the comments down below what is your mission statement. I probably want to apply some of that for myself. Take care, guys. Bye.